Tell Uncle Boris, how old are you? Two. And what's your name? Grisha. Since I was born, I haven't been able to walk at all. My body was slowly changing, my spine was curving, my ribs were tightening. Well, I guess you can see for yourselves. At first, the doctors told my parents I wouldn't make it to five years. When we went to hospital, they'd say, What, you're still alive? Despite my body, deep inside I'm a warrior, and I always wanted to die a different way. Not in a hospital ward, no, not because of this illness. At one time, I saved money to hire a hitman to shoot me dead from the next building through the open window. I even told my parents and my brother about it. They were shocked at first, of course, but then somehow resigned. I told them that if I saved enough money and then changed my mind, I'd give them all the money to renovate the apartment. I can't think what you could possibly do to make my hair beautiful. I was always the last girl to catch a man's eye. And the ones who did notice me were mostly drunk. Men just didn't go for me. My life seemed pointless. I was 21, my peers all had families or at least boyfriends. Everything was as it should be for them, but nothing like that was happening to me. As soon as I went outside, I could hear people laughing behind my back. Under the stick insect, or Quasimodon, crooked teeth, huge nose, I'm serious, that's what I had to live with. I was always an ugly duckling. It was more or less fine when I was a kid, but what kind of life is this for a grown man? Stuck indoors all the time. I guess only prisoners know what that's like. I can only go outside in summer, because in winter, if I happen to catch a chill, just getting a cold could finish me off. Look, there are geese. <laughs> Look at them. They're not geese, they're ducks. Ducks, right. Geese. Have you ever seen geese at all? Yes. I've seen them on TV. To be honest, we don't often come here. Grigory hasn't been outside much. He has recently started going out because of me. I always try to take him out. We want to spend time together, visit new places, see new things, and enjoy nature. <laughs> Hello. Don't be shy. Go on, please. I like this saxophone. Yes, it's his favorite instrument. We'll listen for a while. It was a miracle that we met. I was sitting at the computer, hands on the keyboard, desperately crying my eyes out. I wondered if there was any man out there, somewhere, who was just as lonely as me, and looking desperately for a soulmate too. I didn't care at all what this man would be like. Deprived, disabled, ill. I wrote, I'm waiting for you, I'm looking for you. I searched through the internet, typing things like, I'm looking for you, I'm waiting for you. Please find me in search engines and look through the results. I thought someone might write to me. I saw his huge, clever eyes, and I thought, what an interesting guy. His questionnaire proved we shared the same views in life. 
It really touched my heart, especially his final lines. I'm a daydreamer to the marrow of my bones. That's what I've always said myself, word for word. I'm a daydreamer to the marrow of my bones, whether you like it or not. Ты льстишь в окошко, ты веришь в облака. Ты пойми хоть немножко, больше ты не одна. Есть на свете парнишка, он живет далеко. Но своими устами он прошепчет легко. Все слова, что хотел бы, он тебе прошептать. Как он сильно влюбился и не хочет терять. А пока время скрыто, загляните времен. Он в тебя будет вечно очень сильно влюблен. И с надеждой в сердце будет очень он ждать что однажды с тобою будет рассвет и встречать. Hello, Anna and Grigori. Hello. Hello. We've been expecting you. Now let's see, Grigori, I'll put your glasses on you. Yes, okay, thanks. If you'd like a more interesting look, I'd suggest wearing a bow tie with a shirt. Can I see? Of course. You'll be a true gentleman. Of course, I was uh, shocked at first. I'd never come across anybody with such a disease, people who looked like that. But I knew I needed him anyway, that's the kind of person I am. Looks have uh, never mattered to me, it's much more important what's inside. Do you like it? It's beautiful. I want you to like it too. I do. I like you anyway, no matter what shirt you're wearing. I know what women are like. You might say, I'm not going anywhere with you. You're badly dressed. I told her from the outset, quite plainly, that I was ill and I would often send her photos so that she'd have no illusions about what I looked like. She would send me her photos, too. She'd look unkempt and without makeup, anxiously asking me whether I liked her or not. I answered, of course I do. The woman I love will always be beautiful to me, even in curlers, a dressing gown and slippers, simply because I love her, because she's dear to me. How can I not love her? With her arms around me, we cuddle and I know she's mine. I dreaded our first meeting. I come from a Kazakhstan village called Irtysk with a population of 7,500 people. I never traveled by plane before and didn't really know what to do. The mere thought of going so far was shocking. But my love was so strong that I agreed to come anyway. I went in and there he was sitting on the sofa waiting for me. We had a sort of agreement about how we'd know what we felt. Well, if I liked her, I had to try to kiss her. I asked her, why are you crying? You think I don't like you? Yeah, she replied, so I said, you silly girl, I can't move close enough to kiss you on my own. I'm waiting for you. Then she said, may I? I said, of course, and that was our first kiss. I love everything about him. I've grown to love every hair, every one of his fingertips. They're all dear to me because they're him, too. He may not look the way ordinary people do, but he may be even better. You see, he may actually be healthier than other guys who drink beer on a bench. They might have their arms and legs in place, but I know I can trust him. He understands me, he listens to me, he loves me, the real me, the person I really am. And that's what counts. Anna, I need to know the colors of Grigori's suit or shirt so I can select a buttonhole. I like this color, it's so tender. I'm small myself, so I need a small buttonhole or I'll look as though I'm sitting under a bush. 
She likes lilies. For International Women's Day, I specially asked my father to buy a lily for her. As far as I know, no one had ever given her flowers before. And this was some really smelly variety. We didn't know how to get rid of it. We thought about throwing the flower away or putting it on the balcony. Because I'd put all my love into the gift, the lily didn't wither for about two weeks. So for two weeks, we were pinching our noses all over the apartment to avoid the smell. At first, I kept my eyes open and just watched. But I realized I could rely on this girl. She took it upon herself to care for him. So I have nothing to do now. I was surprised at how well she took to it from the very beginning. When he was a child, we would often leave him alone. But one time, he was sitting at his computer and suddenly felt very ill. After that, he said, do you know how terrifying it is to die alone when there's no one around to help you? He had terrible fits, like panic attacks that left him choking. They're rare now. Sometimes he gets cross with me because I still treat him like a kid. And who are you if not my kid, I say. Even when you're 60, you'll still be my child. He tells me not to put him down in front of his future wife. <laughs> I can see his eyes are shining. His morale is high. He must have realized that he's a true man. He once asked me, do you think I'll ever have a family? Well, we had to be realistic about such things. Since I was about five, I've always dreamed of having a big family of my own, and when your dreams start coming true, you imagine God reading your wishes and saying, so you think you'll never get any of it. Here it is, take it. You too will have everything you want. Tomorrow they get married and they'll be finding a name for their daughter. What if she jilts me at the altar? Anya, she's not going anywhere. Kazakhstan's too far to walk. She's got no choice. She's stuck with you. That's all there is to it. I never made an official proposal, but it was just somehow agreed between us that we would marry. We were talking on Skype then, and she suddenly smiled and said, you know, no one's ever proposed to me. And that's when it struck me that I had actually forgotten to propose properly to her as well. The only thing I regret is that I couldn't lift her up. We are very glad that your wish to be together has brought you to us. To the wedded wife question, I wanted to say no. No is what my heart can't say. That's why it's saying yes, but I was afraid people might not get the joke and decided against it. Yes. Now let the bride answer. Yes. When she asked, I thought, isn't that obvious? I can use my teeth. All the family is getting married. 
You are husband and wife now. You may now kiss the bride. It was a wonderful, magical day. It was so warm, the sun was shining so brightly, like in a fairy tale. And only yesterday it was raining heavily. Grigory reassured me it would be a nice and warm day. As it turned out, he was right. Because Grigory saw the weather forecast on the internet. <laughs> Why then, Grigory, did your internet not prevent your dad from buying a suit that proved to be completely useless? My positive attitude and the love I feel for the world come as naturally to me as waking up each morning. I think there's always a reason to be happy. It's just that people fail to notice it. They have the opportunity to go outside and walk to the shop, for example. They are too lazy, those couch potatoes. Or they can go outside at night to see the stars and the moon. I don't even remember when I last saw the moon. At one point, he admitted to me that he had thought about hiring a hitman because he couldn't end his own life by himself. I asked him, have you thought about us? Have you thought how we would carry on without you? He said that he had, and that was why he decided against it. A fire is burning for a whole new family. He was born in Vladivostok and just wouldn't walk when he was meant to, even at 18 months. He could stand if he held onto a bench, but he wouldn't walk. Doctors told us to go to Moscow to the second medical university, where he was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. His muscles don't rebuild themselves. I was told it's a genetic disorder. But how can that be? No one else in the family is affected. They explained it's an abnormality in my husband's and my genes that occurs once in a million cases. We passed it down to Grigory. Our oldest son didn't inherit the disease. When our doctor advised Tatyana to go to Moscow, his wife told us the disease was incurable and the child would die in three years. To be honest, I was on the verge of beating the stuffing out of him. Such parents are worthy of drinking to on our feet. Here's to the parents. Kiss! 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 We grasped at every straw and tried every possible remedy. Doctors eagerly took him on as some kind of a guinea pig. We transplanted stem cells to him for the last time when he was 15. When that had no effect, he said he was fed up with doctors, with endless experiments, with everything. As a child, I came up with an original way to move around the flat on a skateboard. I'd sit on the board and push with my arms to move around. Then the skateboard gave way to a tricycle. I pushed off the floor with my legs and turned a wheel with my hand. My whole body hurt, of course, most of all the ribs. They were aching constantly, but I only cried in hospitals when doctors tried to straighten my legs. I even fainted because of the pain, and I didn't have any painkillers. He was screaming so loudly that... Excuse me. That they literally had to take me out of the ward. It was heartbreaking. He cried, God, look at them. Look what they're doing to me. God, please do something to these doctors, to all these people. I'm so tired of them all.
I would tell him, men don't cry. Am I a soldier, he asked. Yes, you are. Like dad? Yes, just like dad. It's hard to love a man in a body like this, knowing you have to look after him as if he were a baby. Though I know that all men are really babies. Many people can't understand me. They say it's a huge responsibility, a burden, a cross I'll have to carry all my life. I just say that if you really love a man, it's neither a burden nor an act of courage. There is nothing extraordinary about it, it comes naturally. When we go out together, she always tries to walk side by side with me, so as I don't feel that she's pushing the wheelchair. I'll catch up with you. No, you won't. Yes, I will. No, you won't. The battery has run out. I asked her whether she really wanted this. She's a strong, able-bodied girl. I asked her to think everything over. I warned Grigory that he should have no illusions. I told him to be prepared to hear her say one day that it was all too much and she couldn't take it anymore. Congratulations on your marriage. Now blessed in heaven. Actually, we didn't want an official marriage with the stamp in the passport and all those formal procedures. We just wanted the church to recognize the union of our souls. First of all, I see him as the man I want to build a family with. So in this respect, everything's fine. I want a daughter. Well, you should cut this out in case we have a son who might be offended. I'll welcome a son or a daughter equally, or even both of them at the same time, actually, that would be even better. Every man has a purpose in this world. I am ill, but that's what's meant to be. There is a purpose to that. My older brother is strong and healthy, but it's never occurred to me that it might have been the other way around. On the contrary, I've always thought that even if I had the opportunity to change it, I'd still choose to be the ill one myself and my brother the healthy one. I'm not sure talking about this is right. We asked for help on the internet, tried to raise some money to buy our own flat. I told our story, explained that despite living so far away from each other, Anya and I wanted to build a family and live together. People sent around 50 to 100 rubles, two or three dollars. We wanted Anya to move here with her mother and live together. But then people started turning against us. They started internet groups against me and Anna. There were rumors that I planned to launder money for the apartment, that I was the leader of some underground cult. They sent nasty messages to Anna saying she didn't love me and was only hunting for a flat. So we shut down the fundraising. Anna said she didn't need that kind of happiness. We gave the money to an eight-year-old girl who has cancer. We checked up on her. She lives here in Belgorod. I'm convinced that if God meant for us to meet, he will also help us further on. Everything in its time. I'm sure it will all work out when the time comes. I will be coming here to be with him as long as I live. I can't imagine myself not seeing him or not being with him. It just won't make sense. 
I'll be with him always, at any cost. I've always promised Anna that if she ever realizes it's too much for her and she decides to leave me, I will accept her decision without criticism and I'd shut anyone up who tried to say a word against her. Because it's her choice. I cannot make any promises. Of course, anything might happen, but I know for certain that I will never meet a man who will be closer to me than Grigory. The point is, I have already found my man, and there is no one else for me to find anymore. He is the one. There will never be a second Grigory for me.